This episode of Android Authority is brought to you by Netflix. Head to netflix.com slash android for a free 30-day trial. With IFA literally just a few days away, we have a lot of rumors that will hopefully become confirmed within the next week. But for now, this is Joshua Vergara from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And it's time for another dose of the week's top Android news. It's Android Authority Weekly. The Chromecast was back in the news this week as an app that many people were happy to use suddenly lost functionality. Aircast, or sometimes called Allcast, was an app that allowed you to stream local content from the gallery, Dropbox, or from Google Drive. Created by Kushik Dutta, it was unfortunately unable to function properly after the latest Chromecast update. Given that this is the second time streaming from external sources has been limited, Dutta went on record stating that maybe the Chromecast is only meant to cast certain content. Even though casting a tab from Chrome is still an option, other methods have thus far been limited. Maybe the Chromecast won't be quite as open as some people thought. Which is a concern Google tried to address in an official statement. Basically, they said that the SDK is still in its early stages and will continue to change, so it's not about limiting users' experiences, but rather keeping in line with the current testing schedule. We'll have more info as this becomes available, but for now we can only hope that this won't become a much bigger issue. Samsung's next unpacked event is literally days away, right before IFA in Berlin, and we have a lot of rumors about the devices that they apparently have in the wings. First, let's talk about the Galaxy Gear. It's been reported that the watch will feature a dual-core processor, a 4-megapixel camera actually, and will run on Jelly Bean. 10 hours of battery life allegedly gets you a lot of usage. Obviously these are all rumors, but we'll find out if they're true in just a few days, so stay tuned. And from there, we move on to the Galaxy Note 3. Now, while we were excited to see optical image stabilization in the camera on the Note 3, this actually might not be the case. Apparently, OIS won't be available due to a lack of the parts needed to make it work. It's possible that the Galaxy S5 might just get it instead, ushering in the way for OIS-capable cameras in 2014. Maybe to make up for it, the Galaxy Note 3 camera will be able to record 4K video instead, but this is just yet another rumor. And then, this leaked image was released, supposedly showing a nice view of the front panel. If the bezels are really that slim, we might be in for a hell of a display experience. Yes, these are pretty much all rumors, but at least we know one thing. The Galaxy Gear and the Note 3 will officially be announced on September 4th in Berlin, so we'll have all this information confirmed by then and have all of the coverage available for you at androidauthority.com. If you've gotten used to seeing the charismatic Hugo Barra present new Google products this past year, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case anymore. The vice president of product management has moved from Google and is leaving to join Xiaomi. As moves like this often happen in the world of tech, this wouldn't normally get so much attention. However, this seems to deal with matters of a more romantic sense, as Barra tendered his resignation due to a situation that related to the end of a romantic relationship he had with another Googler. Now, we're not going to go into the details about the relationships involved in this situation, mostly because, well, for the most part, it's just gossip. But this is noteworthy because this is the next top-level executive to leave, especially after the recent loss of Andy Rubin. There's no doubt that Xiaomi really hit a good one getting Bara on their team, and as Bogdan surmises in a great piece on AndroidAuthority.com, we could really be hearing a lot more about the up-and-coming Chinese company in the coming year. Okay, let's get back on the rumor mill, this time about the Sony Onami phone. Now known as the Xperia Z1, the new phone by Sony is expected to launch in India on September 18th. Sony does have an event planned that may announce the Z1 right before IFA, and it is then that we'll see if the phone is really powered by the Snapdragon 800, features a 3000 mAh battery, and comes with the Sony G lenses, those big hulking optic packages that are supposed to be attached to the back of your Sony phone. Speaking of those lenses, they are expected to come in two flavors that feature 20.2 megapixel and 18 megapixel sensors respectively. It's unclear what kind of release these devices will get, but at least we know that our friends over in India will definitely see a substantial release. Plenty of press images and even a video teaser are in the wild now, so the hype train is in full force. Once the Onami phone is announced, however, rest assured, we'll have it covered for you. Our next release that is slated for IFA comes from LG and is a tablet, and actually, it's just been officially announced. 
LG is touting the G-Pad as something that is made just right and just for you. Sporting a 1920 by 1200 resolution display, the 8-inch tablet will be powered by the Snapdragon 600 and feature a 4600 milliamp hour battery. As LG's return to the tablet game, the debut of the G-Pad at IFA might prove to be one of the most important the company has ever done. Stay tuned to Android Authority for a closer look at the new LG tablet on the floor at IFA in Berlin. Speaking of tablets, the new Nexus 7 by Google and Asus is now available in more parts all over the world. Now available in the UK, Germany, France, Spain, and Japan, the great device out of Google and Asus's collaboration reaches even more markets. But that wasn't all Google was up to. Speculate all you want about what this move may actually mean, the bottom line is that the Nexus 4 is now even more affordable at $100 less. Now for $199, you can get one of the most beloved smartphones of the past year easier than ever. And finally, it might seem a little premature to talk about the Galaxy S5 right now, but when someone tells you that it might not be made of plastic, you prop up and listen. We already talked about the supposed OIS feature in its camera, but then a report stated that it could feature a metal chassis. At the most, a sample has been sent to production factories but is far from being even tested. We're still a long way from any confirmation regarding anything Galaxy S5, but this is certainly a nice first bit of buzz. As always, thank you very much for watching and you know the drill. A written companion for this video can be found in a link in the description below. Drop us that like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. This upcoming week, I'm going to be covering IFA, so make sure you stay tuned to Android Authority for all of that coverage because we are your source for all things Android.